everybody, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Director of Development, Christian Harlock. Welcome back to Movie Talk, Sinead DeFries. Yay. Happy to have you. Thank you, thank Just you. to let everybody know that we were having a couple issues with the live stream, because YouTube or whatnot, so people complaining in the chat room, stop whining. <laughs> 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 also here is writer-director extraordinaire, John Schnett. Why, thank you for that intro, Sinead. It's so cool to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see that. Damn. That was good, though. That was mystical. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Also, the hottest producer in the San Fernando Valley, Mark Ellis. Hey, babe. Love you. Good to see you back. We're friends today. We are friends today. For today. No hate. No hate. All right, though Batman v Superman didn't connect with the critics and audience members, one performance that has been universally praised in spite of the reviews is Ben Affleck's portrayal of Bruce Wayne and the Dark Knight. Last week, it was revealed that Affleck has penned a solo Batman movie, inciting the fans at anger eager to see his take on the movie to ask when the movie will finally be greenlit. Speaking with Joe.ie, Zack Snyder was asked if Affleck would officially step into the director's chair for a Batman movie, with Snyder saying, quote, Oh, yeah, for sure. I think he would. I think that's kind of the prerequisite, hopefully, for him doing the film. Christian, will Ben Affleck officially direct a solo Batman film, as the rumors suggest? Yes, these rumors have been around for a while. We've talked about this, and I think Zack Snyder is absolutely correct. I think it was definitely a prerequisite for him when he signed on to do it, that he would say, look, in order for me to come on and play Batman, I'd also like to direct one of these things, because what a nice way to... He, he, He's a guy that has proven himself as a director, and to see Nolan was the last guy to really bring a lot of oomph to the Batman franchise, I think he could do it as well. I think that's definitely part of it. The agent that came out, I guess, a week or two weeks ago said that he's already written a script for it. This will happen eventually. It's just a matter of when they're going to say it. I happen to think that they'll make the announcement at Comic-Con personally, but Schnepp, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine that Comic-Con would be the place to announce uh, the Batman film. Ben Affleck directing it is, uh, you know, a one-two punch. He's gonna act, he's already cast as Batman. Right. Him writing and directing it is just, uh, I think, fantastic. I mean, when he had a he built a bat cave in his own house. That's the, how big of a Batman nerd he is. So it's how big of a house he has. Yeah, he's also yeah he's got a giant yeah. house enough yeah. that he can have like, actually a separate bat cave <laughs> I can't underneath do that it. By one bedroom. Yeah, you know? fully <laughs> functioning too. And so yeah, I I cannot wait to hear the news. Hopefully, it's like 2018. Instead of like 2021, I was like, look, you could skip a couple of those other films to get far. a The yeah. Batman happening. So, you know, it's interesting because it seems to be that's the way Warner Brothers is going. I mean, we even got breaking news right as we were going live that Wonder Woman got pushed up a couple weeks because they're very excited about that movie. So you see it earlier in June of 2017 than you thought you were going to. I think it's going to be the same thing with The Batman. I think Affleck will definitely direct it. It's something that we speculated on as soon as he was announced playing Batman. It's like, oh, what a career risk for this guy who's already on top of the world directly directing wise and now he wants to get back into like a superhero movie but if he's directing it look at a movie like he did with the town which was like a really gritty feel to it mm -hmm. look at something he did with Argo which built suspense during the whole movie so I think he's the perfect choice to do it and when the guy who's been criticized for how he handled the DC universe comes out and says I think Affleck's the right choice to do the Batman it, it's it's gonna happen I think it's gonna happen how about you guys you think it's gonna be announced soon when do you think it's gonna be announced if it's going to be announced at all please comment in the live chat right now or if you're watching after it's live. Before we get to the next story, something that Mark had let me know right before we went on air is, and you guys are talking about it in the chat room, they announced when the Doctor Strange trailer is going to drop. It's going to drop Tuesday night on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jimmy Kimmel is getting all the trailers, Seriously. man. And well, because it's ABC and it's Disney. So no, it's, it's because he's got a winning personality. Well, that'll that'll take you far away in this world. I don't disagree with that at all, but I also think it's because it's a Disney company. <laughs> yeah. um, and it makes sense. That's the way they want to do it. Then we'll drop online. We will definitely do a trailer reaction to that when it happens. But it is exciting that this trailer is going to drop. Now, Mark, what do you think is going to happen with this trailer? You know, Derrickson's doing this movie. Do you think that we're going to get uh, – what are you looking forward to seeing with the Doctor Strange trailer? I mean, look, we saw some of those set photos last week or, or earlier this week with Cumberbatch in action, and I want to fully buy into this character because the set photos were cool, the costume looks nice, but it did look a little silly just running around the streets of whatever yeah. city it was in, like, a cape yeah. and full – it looked like four dudes drunk at cosplay in San Diego, <laughs> and I'm sure I won't feel that way after I see 
see the trailer because I think Scott Derrickson's an amazing director. Where, whereas Affleck's the right guy to do a Batman style movie, right. Derrickson is the right dude to be doing a Doctor Strange film. So I'm looking forward to great things from this trailer. I know you've been looking forward to this thing for a while yeah. now. So uh, is this sketchy jazz <laughs> for Tuesday yeah, Most of my life, unfortunately. But um, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Pretty jacked up about it. I was hoping that 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 skimping around New York would be like kind of like part of this West Side Story Doctor Strange musical number. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that that's not kids relax is that's not really the part of movie magic and then while jumping and run that's not really going to be in the film that's they're probably jumping into some weird portal watch it'll be in the movie and it's a musical yeah. but uh yeah no i'm really looking forward to it and i i cannot wait to see what do i expect to see in the trailer i expect to see dr strange in his astral form i expect to see tilda swinton as the ancient one i expect to see a couple of really cool amazing psychedelic shots from another dimension that's what i want to see for me i want to see what, what i think marvel has done well with the expanding of the genres you know whether it be captain america winter soldier in the spy genre and then guardians of the galaxy the space opera i want to see a little bit of a, like a like a kind of creepy thriller horror film mm -hmm. from from this you know getting derrickson is a guy that you get to you know, it's still a marvel movie obviously but you want to have that kind of surreal feel to it and I want I, I'm that's what I just want to see the different shift in tone because they've yeah. done that well so far that's what I'm hoping to get in the trailer it's called Dr. Strange yeah, right, right strange right it should be strange all right Sinead what is next <laughs> the impact of Batman v Superman's box office performance appears to affect beyond the current slate of DC Comics adaptations into their whole development slate the movie is far from the mega hit Warner Brothers was needing, and now sources tell THR that Warner Bros. will release fewer films that are homegrown, or movies developed from the ground up inside the studio. The move looks to have the studio only focusing on potential hit makers like the DC movies, the Lego movies, and the new Harry Potter spinoff Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. While some rumors point to Zack Snyder's involvement in Justice League as doubtful, sources tell THR that Snyder is staying put and the movie will begin filming this Monday. Schnepp, how do you feel about THR's report about Warner Brothers? Well, it's interesting because we just talked about Ben Affleck directing the Batman and when are they going to announce that? And that's just like announcing money. You know what I mean? Like Warner Brothers is having some trouble right now with like, you know, a few few movies not doing as well as they wanted or projected. But when you announce the Batman, the sooner that movie comes out, the more money you'll make like a billion, maybe two billion dollars. That's what you're talking about is billions of dollars when you talk about something like the Batman. Um, I can see why they, you know, because of the reaction to BVS and the way it's not going to make that billion dollars that they thought it was going to make, um, that they're going to scale back and stick to the hits, so to speak, for the next two years. But they should play it smart and get on, you know, get on the right page with at least the Batman. If you're going to stick with all these known properties, that's the one property that you don't mess with. And you should have had that announced, you know five months ago six months yeah. ago but you know every they're so tentative warner brothers has always been that tentative company they're always very trigger shy they don't want to well unless it's a hit so they kind of they're waiting to 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 make a superman movie because of batman v superman and that's like one of their most iconic well-known characters and they still haven't pulled the trigger on that so you know for them to be so tentative about stuff sometimes i get like a little concerned with their company i don't have stock in warner brothers i don't really care if they live but or as die a fan. but as a fan i want these movies to be done really well and i want them to like kind of be a little more committed so it was really fun when they finally announced their full slate of dc characters i'd like to just have them announce the batman yeah I, i'm i think that it makes sense for them to kind of scale back to because it did it didn't impact the box office the way they wanted to it's certainly going to make a lot of money it's going to break even as well too because internationally it's going to make its money um but it makes sense that they're kind of scaling back and going after the hits because they also moved the jungle book which is the andy circus project which to me makes a ton of sense because mark and i got to see john favreau and disney's jungle book it is off the charts phenomenal um and it makes sense if i if i was warner brothers even if, if batman v superman made three billion dollars i would say push it back to make people until people start to forget the John Favreau one let's because it's supposed to come out 2017 in October and now they're pushing it to 2018 to me that makes a lot of sense Andy Serkis tweeted out that they're going to do that so this is part of their restructuring Warner Brothers hasn't had a great box office 
year in quite a while. And I think that that's why they're bringing back the Harry Potter franchise. And that's why they're really focusing on the DC slate. So it, it makes sense that they, it's, it's strategy and it's a business. Yeah, I mean, while it makes financial sense, it's a little sad to see a studio turn into Journey. Like, we're just going to go yeah. on stage and play the hits. Like, no, don't worry. Nothing new that we've done is going to be thrown in front of you. And that's kind of the symptom that you see studios have in this day and age is like the middle class is being like taken out of movies. Like, because we're either going to go with these huge known properties or very, very tiny budget independent movies. So that's the way the world is working right now. And it, you, you can't blame Warner Brothers for making a business decision. But at the same time, you're going to miss some of that original content, I think. Even though I think Fantastic Beasts is going to be a really cool movie and a different spin on what we already know from that universe, it's like sometimes it is nice to just walk into a movie and not know anything about the world that you're going into. We're not going to get that as much, at least from Warner Brothers. All right. Well, now it is time for Buy or Sell. Pretty easy how this works. Sinead's going to run down some more movie news, and we're just going to simply buy or sell it. Sinead, what's up first? One of Martin Scorsese's longest developing passion projects has been the movie Silence. The story follows two Jesuit priests played by Adam Driver and Andrew Garfield who go looking for their mentor played by Liam Neeson in 17th century Japan, a time when outsiders and especially Christians were treated with disdain and mistrust. Filming wrapped almost a year ago in May 2015, but since, there hasn't been an official release date announced. Thanks to a report at Screen Daily, sources say that Paramount is reportedly lining up a U.S. release this November, just in time for awards buzz and consideration. While a release date hasn't been targeted officially, it seems clear that Paramount is confident enough to hone in on the month of November, hoping for audiences to turn out and for Oscar buzz. Mark, do you buy or sell that Martin Scorsese's silence will be an Oscar contender this year? Ooh, that's a tough question, because while I totally understand that they're opening it around Oscar season, because that's when Martin Scorsese movies are going to do well, because everybody's going to assume that this movie's great and that it's an Oscar-worthy film. It's got Marty's name on it. It's got yep. some big-name talent, and it's opening in the fall. Uh, it makes more sense than if they opened it as a huge summer blockbuster. So I don't, I've seen nothing of silence. So I can't say whether it's going to be an Oscar contender. I love the premise, though. I really am a fan of most of the cast. And Scorsese is a guy who has so many more hits than misses. Every time I see The Departed, I, I like it a little bit less and less for whatever reason. But Hugo was a phenomenal movie that Scorsese did even more recently. So if it's more of that style of filmmaking and less The Departed, this thing has a great chance to sweep the Oscars. Yeah, I think uh, for sure this is a buy for me. Uh, I think that this is going to be an Oscar contender. I think because they know what they have with Scorsese. And I think that if Scorsese did make a stinker, uh, if he did, then they would be looking at it. They would be saying, eh, maybe this thing should come out January, February, March. We'll sell it on Marty's name and, and see what we can do. But if, if, like you said, you put it out in November, they know what they have. And I think there's already been some buzz on Garfield's performance in this film. So it makes a lot of sense that this is, I, I'm gonna pretty much guarantee that you're gonna hear about this movie a lot come awards season, Schnepp. Yeah, this movie had like just in the tone of it and even some of the visuals r reminds me a little bit of The Mission. Remember that film, The Mission? Yeah, of course, with De Niro. Yeah, right? so like Scorsese's a, such an amazing filmmaker. Uh, it's great to see the confidence that they have and that they're going to release it in the Oscar primetime release date. So, yeah, I think it's good. You know, they're releasing it for it to become an Oscar contender. I think that's what they would hope. I see all of these amazing actors. You put that with Scorsese in a really cool, interesting story. Why not? You guys with me on The Departed at all? Like, like do you get like it, it? Just every time I see it, I get so mad because it's well, a little more choppier. Ellis, how many times horrible. do you see it? I mean, the, I see it on TV really? a lot. It happens a lot. It comes on. I still love his classics. I thought Hugo was great, but The right. Departed, like, I'm like, ah, okay, fine. Look, I've yeah. seen The Departed three times, and I've liked it each of the three yeah. times. Yeah. You know, right. but it's I'm watching it too much. Maybe it, a little too many times. It's actually gotten better for me. So yeah. I, I really. I really I keep, like watching. Little, keep, keep watching. Keep watching. The little boots at the end that he puts on, at, you know, he's a little. The fun. over the, the, the even tracks. <laughs> well, the drop you over the head with the rat at the end is still something that's just like. Sure. But sure. I don't know. I really like the performance. There's great scenes. Yeah, There's great yeah. scenes. Come on, Jack Nicholson. Come on, man. Um, okay, what's next? Christopher Nolan's World War II action thriller Dunkirk is almost ready for production and has now added one of his favorite familiar faces. In a report by the rap, Killian Murphy will be reteaming with Nolan for a fifth time with a supporting role in the movie. 
following roles in Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, and Inception. Murphy joins Tom Hardy as the other Nolan regular in Dunkirk, Kenneth Branagh, and Bridge of Spies Oscar winner Mark Rylance. The film tells the story of the evacuation of Dunkirk during the British military operation that saved 330,000 lives as Allied soldiers were surrounded by German forces. While showcasing a list of veteran actors and favorites, Nolan also cast a number of newcomers with Fionn Whitehead, Jack Loudon, and One Direction artist Harry Styles. Woohoo! The movie will <laughs> begin filming this summer. Woohoo, indeed. Christian, <laughs> do you buy or sell Killian Murphy joining the cast of Nolan's Dunkirk? Totally buy it. I think that it makes a lot of sense, and I think that Nolan puts together his pieces of his puzzle the way he likes to put them together. So I like not knowing that much about his projects. I've always not known. Like, that's how I went into Inception. I knew very little, mm -hmm. loved it because of it. Um, and Harry Styles, if he thinks Harry Styles can act, then great. Let's see what Harry Styles can do. Uh, it is one of those things for me. I am an in Nolan you trust type of guy. I Interstellar, I have completely been on the record saying the first time I saw it, I wasn't a big fan of it. Went back and watched it a few more times and wound up really liking it. So I want to see what he does with this cast. He knows how to cast movies very well. He knows who he trusts. He knows how this act. He knows how Killian Murphy works. So yeah, buy for me. Snap. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I think Killian Murphy's. I I always for years would say Cillian Murphy. Because yeah, a lot of people very, did, Yeah, what a tricky name, Killian. Um, yeah, but he's a great actor. He brings like he's got this weird energy to him. So I think him and Tom Hardy both have that bizarro energy, and I think that's what Nolan like feeds off of. That's why he keeps hiring those guys. Right. I think it's great. So I buy it. Yeah, it's a buy for me too. He's got those eyes that like you. It's it's, it's he's got a nice face. He's like right. he's got a yeah, handsome right. face, but like the eyes, it's like you don't trust something about it in movies. So you're not sure if he's a good guy, if he's a bad guy. He's played straight up villains before very well, but sometimes he gets to be a little more complex and three dimensional with what he does on screen. Those are the times, and that's what I think it's going to be in Dunkirk. Now Harry Styles, on the other hand, he's the kid from One Direction, right? Mm -hmm. He's yep. the bad boy of the group. Like, like with the long hair, so and he doesn't Jagger shower one. that much. And is he the one with a face tattoo? Didn't one, one of them got a face tattoo recently? Did, uh, I don't know. Is this, this, Why are you asking me as if you assume I know because everything about One Direction? Because I'm pretty sure Harloff and Schnepp don't listen to One Direction as much as you do. Um, he, yeah, he is the one with the long hair, and he was dating Kendall Jenner. He's oh, a front okay. runner. All right. The well, main guy. All right. Let's see if you can act, kid. Good luck. I believe in him, you guys. What the hell is going on? I don't know on? what it is. Yeah. It's a new trick they picked up. Uh, now, I want you guys to get the return of the S-Rats. I want you guys to uh, to, to comment as well. To a lot of people, you guys, it's, it's kind of back and forth. A lot, there are a lot of buys for Killian Murphy, and there are a few cells here and there, but that's what we want you guys to do right now. I want to see exactly what the chat room is saying. Buy or sell on the topics. Get involved in the conversation. We'll read up some of the stuff you guys are saying. Sinead, what's next? That face is going to haunt me, you guys. It's terrifying. <laughs> One of the more popular game-to-film adaptations by the fans has been the Sony adaptation of Uncharted, a movie that has seen active development for years now. Neil Druckmann, who served as writer and creative director for the game, was recently interviewed by IGN, and the update that he gives does not sound very promising. He goes on record saying, quote, every once in a while they'll come in and they'll present to us. Here's the script, here's what we're thinking. We'll tell them what we think works, what we think doesn't work. That's where we're at. Last I heard is they got a new screenwriter, but we haven't seen anything in a while. Seth Gordon was the latest director announced for the job with a release date set for June 10th of this year, but Gordon departed the project last June. Right now, Sony has the film scheduled for June 30th, 2017, but based on the comments from Druckmann, it looks like the movie is far from seeing a green light. Schnepp, do you buy or sell the Uncharted movie getting off the ground anytime soon? Um, I buy that it's not getting off the ground anytime. Okay. So <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, this is in that same kind of category as like uh, when you have video game movies like Halo, where the companies that make the video games are also really deeply involved mm -hmm. in the movie. It, it's kind of sometimes it becomes a standstill because if they have creative decision making powers, and so like a screenwriter has their take on the uncharted world, and they bring it in, and then they have a director attached, and that director's like, Yeah, I'm totally behind that take, and we did some conce conceptual art and this and that, but then they have to bring it back to the people who are in charge of the actual game. They might be like, Yeah, that's not what we wanted. And yeah. it could really just really literally be like, yeah, go back to the drawing <laughs> Reset. board. Reset. Yeah, and it's sort of, it's not, it's not that simple. Like, I'm sure they give them notes and things like that, but I think that's where you have to have that separation in order to be able to make an Uncharted movie. It has to be separate from the video game company. Um, otherwise, the video game company should just make it, but then again, they'll say, well, we're not in the movie business. So you have this kind of weird, uh, you know, 
problem that happens with video games. That's why you never saw the Halo movie. That's why so many things just get like stopped up and then it never happens. Or we'll be seeing Warcraft and Assassin's Creed. So if those films really pop off and work really well, then maybe a lot of these other films might move forward quicker. So I, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm selling the fact I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, it's because of exactly what you're saying. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. And it's like there, there's... There's a time where you have to say, okay, I trust in this production company to make the movie or the studio to make the movie that I, that I, I these are the points that we'd like to happen. Find the executive or whoever is it that's going to say, okay, we'll make sure that we focus on these. Now let us do our thing. But like you said, it's, it's just, it doesn't seem like that's happening here. Now, there could be a situation where they, like you said, Warcraft crushes, Assassin's Creed crushes, and the pressure starts to go on. Look, this is one of the ones the fans really want here. You know, like Mass Effect is another one, but this is one, let's make this movie, because this is a guy, Nathan Drake, that could be the next kind of the Indiana Jones. He really could. He's, right. he's a great character, one of the best video game characters that's right, that is really ready for a movie adaptation, but you need the right people. You need the right team. They shouldn't rush forward with this movie if the team does not agree on it, because then you, you don't want to do an injustice like the Super, Super Mario Brothers. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mark, what do you think? <laughs> Please don't bring up Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I mean, come on. This is yeah. the, the video game only is what I'm repping here. I buy that this will happen sooner rather than later. And by sooner, I, of course, mean when Warcraft comes out and crushes or when Assassin Cre Assassin's Creed comes out and does very good business. Because as soon as you see those dollar signs, Sony would love to have another franchise under their belt to go along with Spider-Man and whatever that Men in Black, uh, you know, uh, uh, 21 Jump Street train wreck is going to be. Oof. So I think that they really want Uncharted to happen soon. They just need a video game movie to come out whether it's going to be uh, Warcraft or whether it's going to be Assassin's Creed and say, see, look, you can make a profit off these movies, then magically a script's going to turn up that they approve and we're going to go forward. I think it's going to happen by the end of this year, probably a lot sooner than that. Oh, interesting. All right, Sinead, what do we got next? Mel Gibson has been mostly absent for the past few years with the exception of popping into Stallone's Expendables 3 for a smallish part. But now he is back taking a page out of Liam Neeson's book and starring in the action movie Bloodfather with a trailer dropping for all of us to see. In the movie, Gibson plays John Link, an ex-convict who must protect his estranged daughter from violent drug dealers. The action thriller also stars William H. Macy, Thomas Mann, Elizabeth Rome, Diego, Diego Luna, and Michael Parks. The movie is scheduled for release by Lionsgate this summer. Mark, buy or sell the new trailer for Mel Gibson's Bloodfather. Ooh, yeah, I buy this trailer. This looks like something like, like I haven't seen him like this since Payback. Because yeah. I didn't see that other, he, he had some other movie come out recently that was like direct to on demand yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, the, Gringo. Yeah. The, the Gringo. The Gringo. I heard it was yeah. good. I, I never saw it. Yeah, I never saw that. I never saw the uh, the Beaver. Uh, I, there, there's, there's Mel Gibson movies that I've missed, and it's in no small part due to the fact that the guy's just fallen off the radar. He's been to Crazy Town a number of times. With this, it looks like he's channeling it in the right direction and this is now on my radar for like a movie I really care about seeing. Christian pointed out to me yesterday that oh the trailer for Bloodfather came out and so I watched it excitedly and I watched it again and I'm like this this thing has potential man. It, I agree I buy it as well too and I also buy that I think that it's Gibson's um, production company that's putting it out there as well He there's that scene when he's on the phone with his daughter and he's like yeah they're gonna blame me whatever too he, it looks like he's in the tr he's in Riggs's trailer right <laughs> I, 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 like there i got flashbacks of like an old Riggs, but um he looks grizzled i but this was a guy that if you would have told me before taken came out that <laughs> the resurgence of this type of the older actor mm -hmm. kicking, i would said well gibson's going to be the guy that leads us into that right who would have thought it was going to be liam neeson but the fact that gibson is finally doing i mean john travolta is doing one now oh um, boy yeah uh with that with that yeah, anyway, uh, he, but he, but Gibson Gibson to me is the perfect one for this. It looks great. I want to see him. I, I still think that he can do some great stuff as an actor. I want to see what he's able to do. This trailer to me looks promising. I don't think it's gonna be a big blockbuster movie. I don't even know if it's right. getting a super wide release. But it's a movie to me that I want to see. The guy's got the chops. He just has had some really. He's done some really stupid, stupid things in the past. Um, now, whether or not he can come back from that in the eyes of the fans, that's that's a debate. That's that's going to be open forever. But as far as him putting out a worthy performance, this one looks like it could be that. Schnepp? Yeah, I guess I'm going to side by it. I don't know. If, you know, it's not a full buy. Um, yeah, I wanted to be called Blood Fathers and have Danny Glover show up oh, and just great. be like an unofficial lethal weapon. No. He's not too old. He can <laughs> just do it. 
Um, but yeah, you know what? It reminded me of like a kind of a B or uh, maybe even a D movie '90s action flick. Just the you know like yeah. the, you come out of that trailer, you know, and just some of the. It looks very cheap. It looks like a very cheap movie that was made, but. Mel Gibson kind of glues it all together, you know. If it, just imagine another actor in all this in this trailer, and it would have just been like, "Oh, this looks like a like a lame action, you know, movie that that just shows up on Skinamax." You know what right. I mean? So uh, I think Mel Gibson makes it. Uh, that's why I'm going to tentatively buy it. But he was fun to watch in Expendables three. Like, like I like seeing him in that role. And the one thing this trailer lacked, though, which I don't know that it was going for, is it didn't have that special feel that Taken had. Because right, I don't right. think this movie's going to be big. I don't think that this is the resurgence of Mel Gibson by any stretch of the imagination. That Taken trailer had that one, like this very special set of skills. That phone conversation is why people went to go see Taken. And then they're like, oh, dude, Liam Neeson kicks ass. Right. It's not going to be the same thing with Mel Gibson because the trailer clearly wasn't designed for that. But for people who love 90s action movies and want to see more of those in theaters, I think this trailer is for you. I yeah. am actually surprised with the amount of buys for this trailer in the chat room. You guys are buying the um, the trailer for Gibson, and we'll see what happens once it comes out. Now it's time for Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at AMC. Sinead, what the hell came out 10 and 20 years ago? All right, 10 years ago, we have The Benchwarmers and Friends with Money, and then being released 20 years ago, Primal Fear and Faithful. Whew. I'm going crickets. No, uh, did crickets come out on the same day? Because I don't know. Uh, the only one, one, yeah, Primal, yeah, Primal Fear. Fear. That's the only one. The other films are like, who are they real? <laughs> is this <laughs> Photoshop? <laughs> what is this? Let, let, is that share? <laughs> yeah, share. share. In yeah. a Target ad? Yeah, yeah with a Target. Yeah, yeah in a yeah. Target ad. Yeah, literally. <laughs> if we could have moved forward yeah. in time, this that was, maybe see, people that would've... was before the advent of Target. Like that right. was back when people still went to Kmart or Super Kmart. Right, right. That was uh, a pretty exciting time. I mean, it's it's Primal Fear all day, man. Yeah, this, I mean this movie. It's creepy. Ed Norton, super creepy. Ooh, Ed, put Edward yeah. Norton on the. Put people realize, make him realize who he was, like what he could accomplish as an actor. Because it's again, it's twenty years ago, but I still don't want to spoil it. If it's people who are brand new and never heard of this movie, mm. check out Primal Fear for both a great performance on Richard Gere, a really good story. Um, and it just twists and turns yeah. and everything around that movie. It's it's a really good investigation. I love Primal Fear. It's a yeah. it's a great movie, and you've never seen it, right? Uh, no, you I'll just see, you, I'll you, see myself out. No, you I know, should see well, it. Well, Ellis, you haven't seen anything on this slate. As not, nor, neither you should have seen right. any of these films. But we're saying out of I all know, these, no, Primal I have Fear. seen some of these other films. Oh, really? I saw the Bench Warmers. Uh, what is the Bench JT's Warmers? JT's in the Bench Warmers. I did. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's yeah. In it. yeah, Bench Warmers came out at that like the tail end because Rob Schneider had like a weird like film presence because he had uh, the the hot chick came out and he had the animal right. and he had Deuce Bigelow and they were all on the heels of the first time he was the you can do it guy yeah. in uh the in the water boy and everybody's like oh yeah rob schneider the copy guy from snl let's put him in a movie and the movies did well enough to keep making him i think bench warmers was the end of that okay uh Nevante 16 is saying that primal fear right now is on netflix so there you Ooh, go Ellis. damn check it out. i got some other stuff to watch on netflix oh. first how Sorry. about you guys out of the movies that came out 10 or 20 years ago which are the ones that stand out to you guys. I know we have people watching from ages all over the place. So do you remember Benchwarmers or do you remember Primal Fear? Which is the one that stands out to you? And speaking of you guys, it's time for Mailbag. This is where we take your email. Oh, actually, no. I skipped over something. I apologize. You're right. Thank you, Ellis. we got to talk more out. about Faithful starring Cher. No, Ellis, Ellis, <laughs> what, what we're going to do, I totally forgot. Hardcore Henry is coming out this weekend, and Mark got to speak to both the director and the star, Shalto Copley, yep. for a little bit. We're going to play a little bit of a clip from that interview. Take it away. How would you sell this movie? How, what can you say to all the fans watching as to why you need to go check out Hardcore Henry? Do you want to start? Well, <laughs> you know, for me, it's, it's a unique cinema experience. You can watch most movies today, you know, are made in such a way that you can watch them at home and, and be pretty fulfilled. This is something that if you miss it at the cinema... You're going to be kicking yourself um, and, and you, later. And it's fine. You're going to watch. You're going to torrent it. You're going to do whatever later. We knew that when we were making it. But it was. It was. It's really designed to be something that is like a social event that you can go with a bunch of friends who have the balls to go first. You know, to be the first guys who are going to go watch it. Um, and it's something you will remember. The film. The film. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, it's going to be something that you are never going to forget. You know, when I was in high school, when I was in college, when I was whatever, I went and we saw that film. 
that it was just unlike anything was, I've ever seen. In my mind, while I was shooting it, what I bring up to the crew, I'd say, when I was a kid and The Matrix came out, and I remember for that summer, I'd have a tape of it, and we'd watch it every weekend a couple of times. I was so much into that, into that film, and I was thinking that it'd be nice to make a movie, and the aim of Hardcore Henry was to, to, to have a film where you watch it, you enjoy it in the theater, you get a great impression, and then a couple months down the line, you get a Blu-ray, you get it on, on iTunes or something, and then you sit down with your friends, you're like, yeah, I haven't seen this, oh shit, sit down. And you watch it, and you watch it to see their reaction, and you watch it again with them, because it's such a, because you know, you get, when, you've, when you've seen the film a couple of times, it's amazing when you watch something you like with someone who hasn't seen it, you're discovering it with them, and you're seeing their reaction. That was kind of the sort of party atmosphere that I wanted um, the audience to get. It certainly is. All right, so you can catch that full interview on the channel a little later on. <laughs> Dude, it's hard. I know, it's hard. You gotta sell it. It's a cool uh, hand they sent us. And it's gonna be on a little later on the channel. We're gonna have Mark's full interview, so make sure you check that out. Now, you guys, like I said, we've been paying attention to the live stream and to the tweets and everything. And yes, we have heard the fact that you guys want us to talk about DC. They just announced two movies that are coming out, untitled, on October 5th. 2018 we'll have an untitled one and then on november 1st 2019 courtesy of screen rant they posted this and we have now we have these two dates schnepp we heard about this you whispered you think you got some ideas what are they going to yeah, release definitely the batman october 2018 that's a, the perfect halloween movie that's awesome right. yeah so i think that you know glad they listened to us so thanks screen rant for like you know breaking that news that'll be really cool news and What's I, the other one i think the other one's going to be superman superman not yeah. lobot no i probably not lobo i think lobo lobo, lobo, lobo I'm, going, be, I'm going totally yeah. empire strikes lobo. back lobo I, actually Sorry. i'm glad you said lobot he deserves his own no solo movie, movie. No. a star wars story yep. lobot First Lobo. Yeah, but first Lobot, yeah. then Lobo. Okay. And then Lobo versus Lobot. I think it's going to be Lobo and uh, and Batman. Um, I think that Batman is going to actually be November, and then I think Lobo will be, because I think there's been so many rumors for it for a while. So I think that's what we're going to get. Mark, what do you think? Hmm, I'm thinking. <laughs> hmm. Yeah? Hmm. I'm going to go Batman uh, first. Okay. And then Lobo second. That's right. my, it was that Schnapp's bet? Uh, yes. I said those. Superman. Oh, he's Second. a Batman and Superman. Oh, okay. And then yeah, I think, Batman and Lobo, yeah. Well, yeah. look at it this way. DC needs money. Warner Brothers needs money. Batman equals money. And I think if they do Superman right, that equals money. Lobo is an unknown entity right True. now. So, uh, Okay. So you guys, thank you for submitting that for sure. But also, what do you think? What's coming out in 2000? What's coming out first? What's coming out in October? And then what's coming out in November? Will it be the Batman first? Will it be the Batman second? Or will it be the Batman at all? Go ahead and comment which ones you think will be going first. Okay, Sinead, now we get to the mailbag. They have been submitting questions. We have been going over them. What are they saying out there? Matthew writes, hi guys, MPG here. Do you think Harry Potter, this, the Harry Potter spinoff, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, will not do as well due to it ha not having kid or teen main heroes? All the others had this, and this one has adult main heroes. Will this hurt the film? Thanks. I don't think it will hurt the film because we already got the movies with the kids, and it already built a franchise, and it established a world. Now, it... it you know, this is this is also it's not a full novel like the other ones. Do I think it'll do as well as the Harry Potter movies? No, but I think it'll carry over very well because of those Harry Potter movies. And I think that people want to see the continuation of this world. So it makes I, I understand the question. I think it's a very good question, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to impact uh, to, to a disappointing level. I think it's not going to have those big, huge numbers, obviously. But what do you think? Shana? I'll disagree with you. I okay. think it's going to have giant, massive numbers because of the built-in fan base who grew up with Harry Potter. So you don't, but you don't. So you don't think it's going to hurt? No, he's, I don't he's think it's. It's not going to hurt, gonna hurt okay. it at all. In okay. fact, it only helps that they've had eight Harry Potter movies right. come out over. You know, you might have been a little kid when you started watching Harry Potter and you grew up with Harry Potter, right. or you might have been an adult when you started watching Harry Potter and you watch a little kid grow up and get old with you. Now you're going to see Fantastic Beasts set in that same world that you grew up with and that you have fond memories of. So I think just that alone, if the movie is good, it doesn't even have to be amazing, but it looks like it's going to be amazing, it's going to 
blow off. It's going to be a gigantic hit. Uh, look, no one knows the child psychology better than I, and I think that they don't need to see themselves in movies in order to be intrigued, particularly when something else they're going to see is fantastic beasts. Like, forget about Eddie Redmayne or Colin Farrell or anybody else who's starring in the movie. There's going to be a lot of cool-looking effects that are going to be obviously in the trailer and in the movie that you sell kids on. Plus, families will know, like the parents will know that this is tied into the Harry Potter universe, so it's something you can drop your kids off then go you know get drunk but i think that this movie's not going to do nearly as well as harry potter simply because the movie's not called harry potter it's not called harry pa potter and the fantastic beast that came 70 years ago it's called fantastic beast and where to find them i think it'll do very well but not harry potter numbers. Yeah, but guess what they're gonna be like from the people who brought you sure. harry potter bam every single time you see fantastic beasts it's gonna say harry potter above it i considered that fact and i still stick by my right, no, fight you ellis I, look it's gonna do very well i'm just saying that it's not gonna do harry potter like massive big huge numbers that way it's gonna do good numbers but i mean and i think that we're doing did they say how many movies they're doing in this time period is it, they want to do a trilogy i think they're yeah. doing a trilogy so if and i agree with you, i think it looks fantastic and i think that once you go and this movie does deliver, then the second one has the possibility to do Harry Potter type numbers because we're still going to be in that world. And you've established brand new characters, and word of mouth will help as well. It's got the possibility to do massive numbers. I'm just curious without with missing Hermione and uh, and Harry and Ron. <laughs> no Hermione, it. no Ellis. No. Don't you think so. though that like the Harry Potter fans that were Harry Potter fans when it came out are a little bit older, so now we are the same age as potentially these characters, you know what I'm saying? Well, but this is a prequel though, and to where the characters that are coming out, yes, they're, they're yeah, older, Yeah, but like sure. the idea of like not being as attracted to a movie because they're adults, but like... Oh no, I think no. they're gonna go see it. Yes. I, I think the new generation right. of little ones, of oh, the, I see the, what the you're new saying. generation right. of little beasts that might wanna go see this movie isn't as hugely popular right. because the book isn't as well known, but it's still gonna do well. Well, because you think about it with, with what Harry Potter did with having those kids is it brought in so many different age ranges right. where this one will probably bring in more skewed older but we'll see maybe it's skewed towards there uh, was something well. intriguing though about seeing the harry potter movies from start to finish seeing how yeah. little those kids were and how like they they were mm -hmm. aging along mm -hmm. with the kids that are going to see them so sure. you miss that effect right um okay what's next Patrick Dempsey, right? Nice. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Ooh. you guys why Hollywood is intent on continuously casting British actors for American roles. <laughs> I wish roles. this was the real Patrick Dempsey. Probably yeah, it is. <laughs> I think it is. He's watching. Yeah. What I find is that while there are good ones, there is an abundance of bad American accents. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Ba ba booey. Bam, a Stern reference, too. Yeah. Love up, Patrick Love you go, McDreamy. Yeah. Fa-fa, foo-fa. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the reasons why is, is the training, man. It's the, I think that it's funny because I was talking to my, my father-in-law, who was a professor at USC for about 30 years in theater. And we, he were, we were talking about just the studying of acting the way that it's taught today. It has come such a long way from the way that like a Brando was trained in today, American acting to British. It's almost like with boxing. It's like all the European heavyweights are the ones who are the ones out there that are, because they, they still have the camps. They still have, they, it's, it's just it, as where American fighters are, are more on MMA and everything too. So I think that it's more of a study. I think that, and that's not all American actors. There's certainly not American actors that are, that are absolutely, um, into the arts, but I think a lot of American actors are focused on celebrity, a lot of it yep. too, and, and being a movie star, as where I think that a lot of the classically trained thespians, actors, yes, thespians are coming from. You you get the the Christian Bales and the, you know the Andrew Garfield, you know you get people of, of these. That's why you get the up and comers. You get all these. Then you get actors that not an American actor, but Canadian actor like like uh, Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. And there's it's it's just. It's. Just, I think it's a matter of where they're studying. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look. If you're a British actor, you wanna you wanna grow up and you wanna master Shakespeare. If you're an American actor, you just wanna marry a Kardashian. That's basically what we're saying. Right. Is that I wanna be famous versus I wanna be a great actor. I don't think that applies necessarily to a lot of American actors. I think that's the perception more than the reality. But there is something to be said for like. We got a British guy playing Superman, and we had a British guy playing Batman for a long time. So it's it, there's something there. I'm just not sure that it's as clear cut as oh, British, Brit the British work really hard, and Americans are lazy. Like I don't think that's it. I just think that sometimes the British have been acting for a lot longer mm -hmm. than America. They've been for like centuries longer than we. We're just a little teeny kind. We're we're new here.
You know? Yeah, I think Mr. It, English, what do you think? Well, I think it's it really comes down to I'm not even doing that. <laughs> I miss oh, Mr. English. Oh, I love give Mr. English. Give me a couple of crumpets then. And so I think it comes down to it does come down to the theater and it comes down to acting. When you have actors like Tom Hiddleston who can do entire right. plays and memorize things and become just become that character every every night in front of in front of a live audience, that kind of acting, those kind of acting chops, people just go for the Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, Fastbender, all these different actors who who come from the theater. So it's like it's that kind of thing where they, they can transform and become different uh, characters. I don't. I'm not going to say better than American actors, but they're just getting those chances a lot. It just seems to be that's where it's at right now, unfortunately. So okay, now it's time to hear a little bit more from you guys, and we're going to do some live Twitter questions. So Sinead has been going through the Twitter feed and picking some out. You guys can always go to at Collider Video to submit those questions. Sinead, what are they saying out there? Abigail tweets, hi, I saw that the Suicide Squad movie is going to reshoot reportedly for three weeks. Does that make you nervous? We were asked this question recently. I don't right. think that's been confirmed. We don't know. But what is concerning you at all? It doesn't make me nervous at yeah. all. I mean, that's I mean, we were talking about this yesterday, uh, you know, on Heroes. It's like it's it's every single film gets reshoots. They even Feige says, like, when we start a movie, a Marvel movie, we we set aside like a three week period of time where we get everybody back to work on scenes that might maybe we want to plus a couple of scenes. We want to add a scene. We want to subtract a scene. We want to redo a scene. And that's how every movie, I think any big blockbuster should set aside a couple weeks once they have a cut and they, you know, they can add scenes, maybe, oh, we flesh this one scene out or we want to take this character and give them another scene or this one character didn't work. Let's reshoot that. I think it's smart. And I think that's been the plan from the get go with Suicide Squad. So, you know, the reactionary buzz is like BVS is too grim and dour. Let's make sure Suicide Squad's funny. Let's add these new comedy scenes. I think a lot of people's a lot of people have misconception about Suicide Squad from the get. It is going to be very funny. I'm not saying it's Batman and Robin funny. I'm saying it's going to have a sense of humor throughout the whole film. And they're probably adding a few new scenes that they're like, hey, this would have been this. Would, this scene would work so much better if this character did this. And that's what they're doing. So I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not worried about if they're adding humor. What I was for me, the reports and again, these are just rumors, the reports of whether or not they're going to make it lighter be, and, and they're going to try to change the tone because of they're worried because of some of the, some of the criticisms with Batman v Superman. Again, rumors. But if let's say that if this is what they said, well, they didn't like the tone and, and maybe the dark tone isn't really working. Um, so let's let's add some more uh, colors. And this, if that's not what David Ayer wants to do, then he shouldn't have to change right. it because of another movie. Right. But if they're just doing reshoots because they're doing reshoots and they need to get more stuff, that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's just we're never really going to know whether or not why they're doing it but i that's that's the only thing that would concern me is that they're switching tone because batman v superman had notes from the fans i think it's three weeks of reshoots with nothing but british actors they got all <laughs> the americans out of there and it's just brits and suicide squad the way it should be um okay what's next Bren benson tweets my question is who's more of a nerd christian harloff with star wars or john schnepp with comics I'll let you Man. answer that because we got the reason. I, I know where this mm. got stemmed from. This is this was from our, we just put up the Force Awakens commentary, which is live right now. If you've got the Force Awakens, <laughs> you should check it out. And I am a big fan of the canon going on in Star Wars, so I was referencing the book like quite a six thousand different oh, they books do it constantly yeah, again, yeah, constantly. But, but, but he goes, but this is for the book, and there's things that are ca ca canon. And he was just he goes, he looks at me, he's like, "You're a real Star Wars sweaty." Uh, so well, no. Here's the, here it is. I'll <laughs> I'll say yeah, definitely. As far as for Star Wars, Christian is like the biggest Star Wars nerd that I know. As far as reading every single book, every comic book tie-in, every video game cinematic cutscene, every you know Star Wars Rebels, every so he's like immersed himself in that Star Wars universe. Uh, but like for myself, I just watched you know The Force Awakens, so he kept mentioning like, well, the backstory of Miles Kanata's friends, Kimby Scamby, that was in a Blood for <laughs> Blood Farts Five, Star Wars, a new story, a new. But hope. it's canon. But he's like, but it's canon. I'm like, look, dude, I don't give an f. I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy the fucking film. Whoa. Stop talking about, stop talking about all these weird books, man. And it's like. I get it that it is canon that it fills in some of the backstory, but people like me are not going to read those books. I just want to enjoy the film. So it's like if the film, it's like if there's a scene in the film that I'm like, oh, I wish they explained that. He's like, well, it's fully explained in uh, Star Wars <laughs> Saboteur Seven, uh, yeah. page fifty-three, with but Darth Vader's son. Is, but, so. the but to to further along this question, this guy 
is probably the sweatiest comic book guy you will ever hear. I walk in sometimes, and I love, and I come in. And I like to watch Heroes because it's it gets me informed. But there's and, and there's sometimes when they'll go off on well, in issue three twenty five in nineteen eighty seven, and you're just like, wow, they really know their stuff. So I don't really think that there is a one or the other. See, we both- I can settle this. <laughs> I, I can tell because I have to deal with both of you ad nauseum. So here's <laughs> here's the way that it shakes up. Okay, is that is that lifetime stats? Schnepp wins biggest nerd because Schnepp has been collecting comic books since he was a fetus, and he's been he's been digesting yeah. those and absorbing the material ever since then. So he's got the longer track record. But recently, what Christian Harloff has done with Star Wars canon is unprecedented. He, if he could chop it up and snort it in the bathroom, he would totally do that to the Who's comic to say books. I haven't. So it could have happened. So I'm going to say while Schnepp is like Larry Bird, the greatest career all time shooter, I'm going to say Christian is like Steph Curry, where it's like, dude, this guy's stats are impressive, and he's coming up on your heels, Schnepp. You better keep reading comic books because this guy's well, coming. I think they're also in two different worlds, so it's not yeah. even a competition. It's really like we're just both big fans of these different things. I mean, comic books is a larger world, so I, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm, a, I'm the king of all comics. Or I have, uh, There's a lot of information in comic books that I haven't read. I have to say, like, in the, in the niche world of Star Wars, this guy's got almost all the bases covered. He would definitely say Bestman. You know what I'm saying? He would. Oh, he would you know, I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Had to fit that's that good. one. That's good. What's happening? So, uh, well, yeah, speaking there's of the no showdown. competition. If you're a fan, you no. should just enjoy this stuff. And if you like Star Wars, watch his show. If you like comic books, watch my show. It's a win-win. I agree. Now, people are saying, and I'm listening to the chat where people are now suggesting Harlow versus Schnepp in the Schmodown. Um, that that right is not fast. Star Wars. Well, right, right, right now, Schnepp's got a big match coming up with yeah. Finstock. Um, I am going to be doing a team battle for the championship with Mark Ellis as we go up against Finstock and uh, JTE. So if you haven't been watching the Schmodown, you should. I know Campy and Merle's match is over 130000 right now, and then we put up Mance versus Roka, which is by far the best Schmodown match we have ever done in the history of this thing. So dating back to when we did it on the Schmo Show. So if you haven't watched Mance versus Roka, check that it's out. very entertaining. All right, Sinead, who's the biggest nerd, me or uh, Schnepp? I, mean, I think you guys are equally as nerdy to nice. one another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'm the cool one. All right, what's next? Right. <laughs> All right. Carrie Smart tweets, would you like to see a Scott Pilgrim expanded universe helmed by Edgar Wright? Oh, a Scott Pilgrim? Mm. I think I would like to see it, but I just don't know if mass audiences would like to see it because the first one is a cult movie for sure, and it's a great movie. It's just I don't know if it's going to – it would sell to mass audiences. Can we? Can you give me that on Netflix? Is that possible? Get, or like Hulu or something like that? Like you got to throw some budget behind it. It does require some effects, but maybe mm-hmm. you can deal with evil exes like in an episodic kind of thing. It's I, super over the top, so which yeah. makes me feel like it would really work in a Netflix <clears throat> space or a Hulu space. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun watching that movie. I would love to go back to that universe in some form. You know, for me, I just love the movie, and it's a one and done. I don't need to see an expanded universe of it. I'd like to see other movies that Edgar Wright's going to make. Why don't you put down your comic books and come join hey, us in the movie world? Why don't you uh, relax there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do, let's do, let's do uh, two more. Okay. Kyle tweets, what movie that's out right now besides BBS should I see? Well, I would say wait until next week and then go see Jungle Book. Um, it's a good answer. Yeah, I mean, you saw Hardcore Henry. That's coming out this week. Oh, yeah, Deadly Ch- Yeah, that comes out this week, too. As far as movies that are out right now, if you live in an area that has Midnight Special, it's something I haven't even been able to see, but I hear nothing but tremendous things about right. it. If you haven't caught 10 Cloverfield Lane yet, that one's pretty cool. If you haven't seen Zootopia, that's a pretty good movie. So there's other movies out there, but I still recommend, I stand by my my assessment of Batman versus Superman, but if you haven't seen the theater yet, it's totally worth your money. Schnapp, what do you say? Yeah, 10 Cloverfield Lane was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. So, And I can't wait to see Hardcore Henry. So, All right, what's next? At Play to Hype tweets, Marvel had Kevin Feige contract ends in 2018. Do you guys get the sense that he'll step down? No. No way. Hell no. No way. Hell no. Pay me. Yeah. Pay me. That's what he's going to say. You don't step down the year before you have uh, Infinity War Part 2 coming out. Then you have this whole, like, it might make sense if he's done like after Infinity War because they're going to be launching a lot of new movies and like the, you know it like in humans might right, come right. out or some different further out there things but I don't see that guy stepping down anytime it's soon. It's good to be the king. Yeah. All right, let's mm-hmm. do one more actually. Brady tweets how detailed and in-depth can we expect the Civil War reactions and reviews to be after the CinemaCon screening next week? 
Oh man, that's a good question. Um, well, but they're doing the premiere on Tuesday also too, so right. I think there's going to be some stuff. That it's is- nice that they're that confident that they're yeah. doing the premiere. They're they're screening it at CinemaCon, which is basically for like vendors, and that's for like theater owners and stuff like that. So I think they're going to be pretty tight lipped because obviously, if I own a theater, I don't want to tell you anything about the movie other than it's a, you need to go see it at my theater. Um, but if we get a chance to see it early. We're going to tell you guys about it as soon as we're allowed to. Yeah. Hopefully, that's sooner rather than later. And yes, we will drive to Vegas to see the movie if that's what's required. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, I'm going to sleep uh, sleep outside of the uh, Vegas CinemaCon doorstep, <laughs> uh, do a lot of gambling, and show up drunk and see Civil War. No, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to try to make that happen. But yeah, if we see it, obviously, we're not going to talk about spoilers. We're going to just give you our reactions to it. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be doing lots of coverage for it. Okay, so and we'll be doing a lot of coverage for sure on this channel. So make sure once that uh, once that movie comes out, you're gonna we'll be doing spoiler reviews here. We'll be doing regular reviews, trailer reactions, all that stuff. It will be here on the channel. So make sure you check that out. A lot of cool stuff going on on this channel. Like I mentioned before, the Schmodown. It's up. TV talk with Sinead DeFries, who is back every Monday with Josh McCuga and David Yay. Griffin. Make sure that you check that show out. If you haven't, the new episode went up on Monday. It's every Monday. For all you TV lovers out there, make sure you check out TV Talk, Jedi Council, Heroes, the whole thing. We have a lot of great and exciting stuff happening here on Collider Video. I'd like to thank the panel today. First, he is the sweatiest comic book nerd I know. He is the Schnepp man, Mr. English, John Schnepp. Hey, what's up? You guys can follow me just at John Schnepp on Twitter and Instagram. And check out my Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. It's live. It's the last two weeks. Pitch in. Help me make this film. And Mark Ellis. Mark, where can they find you? Uh, you can find Thanks for that glowing introduction. Uh, you can find me. <laughs> Wait, let me do hometown. it. Mark Ellis, Thank the you. coolest dude on the planet. Mr. Rock and Roll. <laughs> Mr. Don't You Know It. It's Mark the Mother Effin' Ellis. That's right. And speaking of rock and roll, Schnapp, I'll be at the hometown of Kiss, Ted Nugent, Axel Foley, and Robocop this weekend. I'm in Detroit at the Comedy Castle. You can get tickets at markellislive.com. And we're so happy to finally have her back here on the Movie Talk set. Sinead DeFries, where can they find you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFries and at thatsoshinead.com. And it's so great to be back. Good. Yay. And for me, you'll see me grabbing Javo Darth's helmet and smashing it into a toilet 175 times in <laughs> Vegas. So make sure you check me out at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, as well as Jedi Council, Movie Talk, The Whole Shebang, and Schmodown this week. Sam Levine versus Hal Rudnick iconic those two guys are going to actually be on the show on thursday to talk about their match who will win hashtag schmodown let us know who you think is going to win the match thanks for joining us guys and we'll see you tomorrow hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider